Good afternoon. The attack in Salisbury was the first use of a nerve agent on NATO territory. On March the 14th of uh, the 14th of March, NATO allies made clear their deep concern and condemnation of this reckless breach of international norms. Since then, intensive consultations have taken place among allies, including here at NATO and in capitals. Those consultations have resulted so far in the expulsion of uh, over 140 Russian officials by over 25 NATO allies and uh, partners. This is a broad, strong and coordinated international response. And as part of that response, NATO is unified in taking further steps. I have today withdrawn the accreditation of seven staff at the Russian mission to NATO. I will also deny the pending accreditation request for three others. And the North Atlantic Council has reduced the maximum size of the Russian mission to NATO by 10 people in line with my decision. This will bring the maximum size down to 20. This sends a clear message to Russia that there are costs and consequences for its unacceptable and dangerous pattern of behavior. And it follows Russia's lack of constructive response to what happened in Salisbury. Our actions reflect the serious security concerns expressed by all allies and are part of the coordinated international effort to respond to Russia's behavior. They are proportionate and in line with our legal obligations. Today's decision does not change NATO's policy towards Russia. NATO remains committed to our dual-track approach of strong defense and openness to dialogue, including by working to prepare the next meeting of the NATO-Russia Council. And with that, I'm ready to take your questions. We have time for two questions. Sky. Secretary General, uh, Mark Stone from Sky News. A couple of questions, if I may. Uh, f first of all, um, what difference in practical terms will these expulsions make? Some will see it as, yes, united, but somewhat superficial. Can you um, give some details of what material difference this will make, uh, the expelling of, of these uh, diplomats, if, if that's what they are? Uh, and my second question, um, what changed last week? Because I know that um, Euro European leaders went into a dinner with Theresa May, uh, and they were they told us, somewhat sceptical on their way in. By the time they came out, um, things had changed completely. Can you give us your sense of, of, of the, the evolution of opinion last week? What we have seen uh, over actually several days and a couple of weeks is that there has been very close coordination between uh, NATO allies, partners, EU members, NATO members, on how to respond uh, to the Salisbury attack and to the pattern of reckless behavior by Russia. And uh, we uh, adopted a very strong statement by NATO on the 14th of, May, uh, of March. Uh, uh, National Security Advice, uh, Advisor um, uh, said, well, uh, met with the North Atlantic Council and also Boris Johnson came to the NATO headquarters and we discussed uh, potential measures, including the expulsion of uh, uh, of uh, Russian uh, diplomats. So as a result of this consultation between NATO allies, many of them are also uh, EU members, uh, many NATO allies and partners uh, uh, decided uh, then uh, to expel um, uh, Russian diplomats. And we also have some new announcements today and then we have the announcement uh, not only by NATO allies today and yesterday but also by the NATO alliance today to reduce the maximum uh, number of uh, diplomats accredited to NATO from uh, 30 to uh, 20, a reduction by uh, 10. So this has been part of a political process which is a response to the broader picture we see with the reckless behavior, the lack of uh, constructive response from uh, the Russian side 
and therefore the need uh, to send a very clear uh, message. The practical implication is, of course, that the, uh, Russia will have a, a reduced capability to do intelligence work uh, in uh, NATO countries, uh, and in those countries they are expelled from. Uh, and, uh, and therefore, this is a clear and very strong message uh, that uh, it has costs and consequences to behave uh, the way uh, Russia uh, has behaved. Wall Street General. Uh, Mr. Secretary General, um, are these expulsions enough to raise the cost to Moscow, or is this more of a first step to deter interference uh, in the West? Uh, and secondly, um, won't reducing the size of the Russian mission complicate the diplomacy side of deter and, and, and diplomacy? Isn't it harder to talk to them if they have fewer diplomats? Well, Russia will still have uh, a diplomatic mission to NATO, and the size of that mission, maximum uh, 20 uh, diplomats, is big enough uh, to facilitate a political dialogue with uh, Russia. Uh, with NATO, between uh, NATO and Russia. And uh, as I said, we are uh, not changing uh, our approach to Russia, which is still based on a, a dual-track approach, meaning strong deterrence, defense, and dialogue. And we will continue to prepare for the next meeting of the NATO-Russia uh, Council. Uh, so uh, this is uh, a response. This is uh, a clear message, but this is not a change uh, of uh, our policy. We will continue to work for uh, a meaningful political dialogue with, uh, with uh, 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 Russia. Then, I think we also have to understand that, of course, what triggered this was the Salisbury attack. But it is part of a broader response by NATO allies to a pattern of unacceptable, unacceptable and dangerous behavior by Russia. Uh, we have seen the illegal annexation of Crimea. We have seen uh, the destabilization of uh, eastern Ukraine. We have seen cyber attacks. We have seen hybrid tactics. Uh, we have seen Russia uh, investing heavily in modern military equipment and the willingness to use military force against neighbors. And all of that has led to an adaptation of NATO, where we also strengthen our um, uh, capabilities when it comes to uh, dealing with uh, hybrid tactics, cyber attacks, but also now increasing defense uh, spending, investing more in our defense, which includes also that NATO allies now have more resources to invest, for instance, in uh, equipment, technology to detect and also protect against uh, chemical uh, attacks. So this uh, announcement today is part of a broader uh, pattern, uh, uh, a broader uh, response of NATO allies to a pattern of reckless behavior by uh, Russia. One very last question, then, Pia Deutsche Welle. It's just quick. No, Terry Schultz, maybe you should change your approach because after Crimea, you downsized the mission, you took away some, some accreditations, and yet you see these acts from Moscow. Apparently, it hasn't worked. So do you think, um, as, as um, my colleague asked, will this make a difference? It sends a very clear message to Russia that it has costs. And I actually think that Russia has underestimated the unity of NATO allies. The way we have responded, uh, the unity we have shown both when it comes to implementing the biggest reinforcement of our collective defense since the end of the Cold War, with the battle groups to the east and part of the alliance, but also with uh, high readiness of our forces, and with the fact that after years of reducing defense in, uh, investments, we are now increasing defense investments. I don't think Russia expected that. Second, I don't think they expected that NATO allies uh, with partners have been able uh, to uh, agree and to stand united uh, in implementing economic sanctions. So the combination of increased military presence, more defense spending, and economic sanctions by NATO allies and other countries is a very strong response and which uh, also uh, imposes costs on Russia 
because of their behavior, uh, the behavior we have seen since the uh, illegal annexation of uh, uh, Crimea. And then on top of that, we see a very unified response by NATO allies and many partners uh, to the Salisbury uh, uh, attack. What I said is that, is that we will still have a dual track approach uh, to Russia, meaning that's terrence defense and uh, dialogue, but we are changing the way we do that, partly because we, are, we have significantly increased and strengthened our deterrence and defense, and we will continue to do so. Second, we have suspended all practical cooperation with Russia, but thirdly, we continue to strive for a more constructive relationship with Russia, and therefore we'll continue to also work for a meaningful political dialogue, which includes the preparations for the next meeting on the NATO-Russia Council. Thank you very much. This concludes this press point. Thank you. Thank you.